Hello, and uh, welcome to my first uh, narrated video. This is Ben talk, speaking, and uh, this is my assistant, Anthony, here, who's going to help us take a look at some stuff that I, that I built on my lathe, for my lathe. So, uh, you want to say hi to everyone there, Anthony? Hello. All right. So, let's get going. Now, I have, um, you might have seen in some of my other videos, I got one of these uh, chintzy little toy lathes from Harbor Freight. And uh, this is a great tool. I couldn't say enough good things about about these miniature lathes. They're they're really fun. You'll hear a lot of kind of negative scuttlebutt about them on the internet if you're reading around. But you know, don't believe a word of it. I mean, if you're trying to get going and get started and learn how to machine stuff, there is uh, no better tool than than one of these miniature lathes. This is a seven by ten model, a seven inch swing and a ten inch uh, travel. And uh, it's been it's been a really great uh, tool, you know. Um, and what I really have been enjoying about it is augmenting it with with different parts and contraptions. And so what we're going to take a look at today is a lever that I built for for doing shaping work. So if we actually look at the piece, I've got these little pieces that I've shaped here with a with a with a you know with a with a cutting tool um, cutting these uh, these notches in here and what I'm going to do with this is actually use it as a clamp for uh, a CNC belt where'd the belt go uh, over here one of these uh, this is a nice belt that I purchased from uh, Sterling Sterling Instrument which I'm sure you've seen if you're if you're into this kind of stuff so that's a point two or point o yeah, 0.2 inch uh, pitch on the belt, and um, the belts are great. They're super cheap, but the thing is, is that you need a clamp to to connect them onto your to your CNC device. And uh, the clamps from Sterling Instrument ran eighty dollars for one clamp. And um, you know those guys are awesome. They have cool products, but I need five of these things, and I'm not about to shell out four hundred bucks for them. So. I had built this uh, shaping system for the lathe, and I um, realized that I could use it to make these clamps. So I've got the, the, the ridges shape that will interface with the belt teeth, and then another piece will go over there to clamp it down. Um, there's still some waste stock on here. I mean, I'm just going to cut this part and this part off so that we'll have a nice little short clamp and drill some holes in there to bolt it down, and we can just get this belt bolted onto our, onto our armature. So let's take a look at the lever. I originally built the shaping leather lever for the lathe to build gears and such, but I realized that there's a bunch of other stuff that can be done with it, uh, such as shaping that part that we were just looking at. So um, let me let me go kind of give you an overview of of the lever and what it does, and then I'll actually work it while Anthony will work the camera. Sorry for the poor lighting here, but um, you can see that basically the the lever there is bolted down to the table and then actually connected to the um, carriage on the lathe. I've got the lathe's apron removed and the carriage is bolted to the lever uh, through this piece that I machined. And so again, I was, I'm going to focus on the lever for this video, but I'll just show you something here. I got a uh, nice, I picked this up at Little Machine Shop. A nice collet, a uh, three number three Morse taper collet that I picked up. This was actually really inexpensive. This is only like twelve dollars on Little Machine Shop, and that can go into the into the lathe spindle, and then you know you can mount your get your end mill in there, and uh, you know I built a draw bar for it and whatnot to pull to connect it from the back, and then use that to machine out this block right here for attaching the the lever to to the lathe so this uh, this all these parts were, were machined on the lathe I don't have a mill I, w I would love to have a mill but they're expensive and I've read a lot about how you can do milling on the lathe so I've been, been getting into it so so we've got the block here connected where the apron would be got a pivot point there all these these bits I just machined this is just junkyard trash I machined up on the on the lathe, machined flat spots there to connect this, and 
That's uh, I actually bought that. That's a you know a gate tensioner or whatever for um, changing the distance. You know you can turn it. You can take this off and turn this part to get a little more length or whatever. Get it dialed in, and then just you know a series of holes bolted in my table. Got found a nice uh, casting at the junkyard. You know just a junkyard scrap there for uh, a pillow block. And there's no bearing. It's just a piece of cast iron. And then some, uh, uh, I'm not sure what you would call this, the yoke for, for the lathe, just machined up, or for the lever, machined out of bits of aluminum, connected up here, and then a nice, you know, uh, a nice stainless steel uh, solid bar that I found somewhere. I've had that thing for years and got it all. So there's, you know, this is machined up. There's some slots, uh, some notches machined there for this to connect on, and this is there's a threaded piece in there to get that on there, and then another threaded piece here to connect that. So, if uh, if you're thinking about getting into milling on your lathe, I would definitely say go for it. You know, you can make some cool stuff. All the stuff was machined on the lathe. So, um, and then now, actually, let me address this too. So I, you know, I've got my uh, my poor man's milling attachment on my lathe as well. So there's my lathe's uh, compound slide, which has been mounted up at a 90 degree angle. Just again, using more junkyard bits. The uh, just some stuff I found. Um, if you're lucky, you can find stuff that's been machined at your junkyard. For instance, like this block I I found, and I mean it's been machined. It's all geometrically, uh, you know, right angles and and whatnot. So I, I fixed that up. I put this plate on there, drilled some holes in my in my cross slide, threaded them and or tapped them, and now connect this ninety angle, ninety degree bracket on there. And then my uh, my compound slide is bolted on there so that I can get a a Z axis on this. And um, if we and so so my shaping paradigm here is that I'm bolting the work onto onto here and the tool is stationary so I, again more junkyard treasures here I got some I think this is uh, architectural steel you know just some some right angle blocks and then a piece of bracketing this is you know maybe twenty dollars worth of steel from the junkyard um, got it firmly bolted onto the lathe got the plate bolted over here and then the tool right there and again Sorry about the lighting, but if we get it like right there, you can see the uh, the tool steel, just a standard lathe tool, ground to the profile of this this thing here. So it's I've, I've ground the tool to that that profile right there, and it's uh, just connected with the block of aluminum that's bolted onto the plate. So the the tool. So what we're doing here is that the tool is stationary and the work is moving, and this is really hard to see. I'm not going to actually go through some of the shaping routine because I don't have a tripod. But you can see a blank is is there bolted to the uh, um, compound slide. And actually, let me just say another thing uh, with Little Machine Shop. This is a really cool piece I got there. The um, T slot table cross slide. So that replaces the uh, old one. The one. Uh, this is the one that that came with the lathe. And. Uh, this this other one that they sell and this was actually pretty inexpensive too that was only thirty dollars but it's far superior you can uh, bolt kind of whatever you want onto there so so I've got a blank uh, piece of aluminum stock bolted on there and that's how we shaped that that little clamp rack so Anthony you want to take the camera here and keep it pointed at me and the lever and I'm gonna work it and show how it works yeah just right about there keep it right there so when uh, we move the lever, it moves the, the carriage on the lathe. So you can just go one, one pass at a time, you know, do a couple thousandths, turn the thing, uh, bring it back, turn it, moving the, the piece this way, go again, bring it back, turn it, moving the piece that way, just eventually shaping, shaping your profile on your piece. And then uh, can we bring it over here and take a look at this one. I think can you point the camera at this thing. Yeah, so I've got my uh, dial indicator mounted on the back there, so I can measure my depth of cut. I don't really like to count uh, revolutions on the on the hand wheels. It's kind of a pain in the neck. So I, I've set that thing up so I can 
keep track of the, the depth of cut there. And then uh, that's pretty much it. So after doing each pass, I can, um, thank you. So, you know, you do a, do a whole pass uh, horizontally on there and then just move it down a little bit using this thing to uh, move it down. And that's how we made the piece. So I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. There's all kinds of stuff to do with this lever. You may have seen these. You'll see these online. Um, sometimes people will call them broaching levers. Um, and it's, you know, on a bigger lathe, the whole, the entire lever apparatus would be just mounted to this thing. But I realized that the lathe is way too small to do that. So I just made one that actually moves this entire thing. And instead of having its own tool holder, I'm just using my my compound rest as, as the tool holder and uh, or well you know as the work holder in this case but you know so there's a lot of stuff you could do with this you could uh, make a keyway I think I have a piece over here that where I built a a nice keyway on here there it is so you know a nice nice shaped keyway a lot of this stuff that you might think that you need a mill to do, you can do with a shaping system like this. So it's a very, a very handy thing to have. And the other thing that I've been doing with the lever is um, building gears. That's what I or actually originally built it for. Let me see if I can find one of these things. But uh, so if you were to, I'll, I'll do another video on this dedicated to this, but just imagine getting rid of this whole thing. This is all away, and this is all just set up in a more traditional way. And then you've got your round piece mounted in the chuck or whatever. And um, I've actually got a, 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 that's what this thing back here for is, is the stepper motor. I can hook it to the back of the lathe, use it to index the spindle, because I don't have a, uh, a dividing head. so. I, I connect this, this stepper motor back over here, just use a little electric circuit that I built to control the stepper motor and index it, and then use the lathe and the cutting tool to shape these gear teeth one by one, you know? And you might think like, oh, this is going to take a week to do that, but it, it actually is just not that bad. If you take light cuts, it'll just cut fast, and you can just kind of get through it pretty quick. So I'm pretty excited about all this and uh, looking forward to making a lot of gears and keyways and racks or, or whatever. So that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for your help.